We've got some hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening to the Content is Profit podcast. We spent the last four years learning the strategies and techniques from some of the top marketers in the world on how to create content that turns into profit. If you'd like to learn more on how to create that content that turns into profit, go to contentisprofit.com. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Guys, today we're talking all about entrepreneurship and how to scale your movement. Let's go. Let's that sounds do it. meaty, delicious. Oh, yeah. But guys, before we get started, do we have a sponsor? Oh, I think we do. Again? Yes. Who is it? Ooh. It's Content Momentum brought to you by Biz Bros. You're, you're one and only. So if you have a this long right form here. content. Yes, those two right there. If you have long form content, you want to multiply your message, but you lack the time or the team to do this. Just give us a call, slide into those DMs and let us know. We can help you multiply that message with a ton of awesome assets. That is right, guys. That is right. Was that a good one? Slide into the DMs. Yeah, yeah pretty Beautiful. good. Pretty good. Awesome. Before we get started, guys, go ahead and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Smash it, actually. And follow us on social media at BizBrosCo. That is right, guys. And if you find this episode impactful, please don't forget to share it with others so we can help them as well. And, Ooh, and... Don't forget to leave a five-star review. Thank you, guys. Let's go. So today's guest show the power of being hashtag table face. Hmm. If you want to know what that is, go check out episode number 76. Either way, today's guest reached out to us, noticing we had lots of friends in common. We started talking, and we knew he had to be on Content is Profit mm -hmm. to share what he's learned. Actually, correction. I actually added him as a friend. Oh, and then you we started chatting. The yes, come on, Fonzie. You didn't uh, get the, the facts straight. He told me come a story on. wrong. He told me a story wrong, guys. Oh, but it doesn't matter. You know why? Because we, I'm actually super excited about this episode. And you know why? Because today's guest is someone that has built a successful company in an industry you won't even expect. <laughs> but then he did what many would be afraid of doing. More on that later, guys. He has launched a top 100 business and entrepreneurship podcast. The company that he built from the ground up. Is he ever winning what? <laughs> Fuzzy, my goodness. Uh, yeah, hold on, yeah, hold on. Yeah. He has launched a top 100 business entrepreneurship podcast. He has a company that he built from the ground up. It's an award-winning one. No big... Oh, man. Okay, I'm going to read this part because... Yes, uh, you do cl it. Come clearly, on. he didn't practice. Clearly, he Ooh, didn't practice. Guys, baby. He has launched a top 100 business entrepreneurship podcast. The company that he built from the ground up, it's an award-winning one. No biggie. And mm, with over uh, 10 years of experience in there entrepreneurship, <laughs> he has worked with clients that range from individuals to Fortune 500 companies. Woo! Oh, let's not forget that he's also an epic and proud father of two, two boys. boys. That is mm. so exciting, guys. Please welcome host of the Introspective Podcast, Awesome Dad, and the Pivot Master, Mr. Jake Anderson! <laughs> Let's go! Welcome, Jake. How's it going, Damn. man? It's guys. <laughs> that intro was just on fire. I don't think I've ever had such an amazing introduction before. So I'm excited to be here on the show. I love what you're doing. I love just the chemistry that y'all have with each other on this podcast. And from one podcaster to another, just thank you for this opportunity. And I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. Absolutely. Man. Thank it, you. Thank you. It, it, the honor is ours. Uh, we've heard since the moment that we announced that you were coming on the show, we've had so much feedback and support from the community, the people that know you, the people that share with you on a day to day. We actually have comments coming in. Jake, 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 there we go. <laughs> thank you, Tony. <laughs> and for those listening guys, we actually broadcast live every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So come hang out with us on the Beast Rose page. We have amazing guests just like Jake here. So dude, tell us a little bit, who's Jake? I know that you love to share this story. So uh, dude, who's Jake? How did everything start with you on the entrepreneurship world? And then what are you doing right now? Man, it's it's uh, it's a story that every time I tell it, I try to find more ways to condense it because it's a lot of unpack <laughs> after, you know, since 2008, really, when I got started. And in fact, I bought a 1979 Winnebago and was going to live in it and write a business plan um, down in down in the mountains of Roanoke, Virginia. If you can't tell by the twang here, that's where I'm from. <laughs> 
And uh, so anyway, I got started in, in, in business. That was kind of the first step for me. Yeah. Um, I ended up partnering with, he was an older gentleman, very successful, worked with a lot of um, country music artists out of Nashville into doing concert productions, which <clears throat> that was a four year partnership that actually didn't work out very well for me. It was really, there was a lot of mistakes that were made, but it led me into the special events industry, which is when I had my first big breakthrough in 2012, I launched an event lighting design company. In fact, my third event in lighting was for Universal Studios movie premiere night. So wow. I was here. Yeah, it was like with a thousand people, there were celebrities there mm. and I was designing this like underwater feel for this room and it was my third event. So one thing I learned through that experience was that as long as you just take action, like, and just know that you can go into things with confidence and take action, you will deliver. You just have to believe in yourself. And ever since then, that was just a big mantra I carried with me. Well, fast forward, you know, that was 2012. I realized that in two, two, really 2018 that I just wasn't really passionate anymore about yeah. special events. Like I just lost that passion. I started getting in the online space and um, I just had developed a lot of success just in business entrepreneurship. I was able to scale out of the operations of that company. I actually moved three hours from the business. I had about a team of 18 people. We were working with you know clients of all different sizes on their special events and I just thought, well, what could I use with what I have to be yeah. able to kind of transition into this next chapter? So I started, you know, I put my company up for sale. Um, it's still like in due diligence right now. I probably shouldn't be saying this on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is like sensitive information, but it's okay. Like it is, it's, we're on the cusp of closing actually. Just a few things I, left. But I was going to say, if you're interested, just like go get in touch with Jake. You know, I think it's a good deal. <laughs> Yeah, there might be. Well, it's 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 in the industry of large social gatherings. Yeah. And to sell a business during a global pandemic and large social gatherings is no easy feat. And um, <laughs> dude, it was like right before it was back in March, I was like about to close with this guy. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit and shut the Ooh. country down and the deal went off the table. Ooh, and oh, then man. fast forward, I was able to revive it. But it just the cost like it pretty much cut my valuation in half. Wow. So like, yeah. I had to like go back, I'm reinventing myself in online space. And really I've, I've found just empowering entrepreneurs through, through the, just through human connection and building relationships and really focusing on their movement. Yeah. Right. That's when I got into podcasting and learning how to really break through hard choices and leveling up in business and life and empowering those relationships and scaling those movements with absolute clarity is really where I, I like to serve. Yeah. And, um, and that's where I'm at now. I just launched a new program recently. It's my first like signature offer, which Let's... is already halfway sold out. So yeah, man, Let's it's, go. It's, been, it's been rocking and rolling. Congrats, man. That is absolutely amazing. You know, I, I love, you are, I think you're like an action taker, but by, by nature, you know what you were talking about. And when I found out that you were in this industry, right? Like the special events industry, I found that so fascinating, you know? And because <laughs> personally, I don't know many people that go into the online space after being there. And I remember, so I was listening to a podcast that you were a part of. And you were saying that at first, when you went into the online world, you were actually going to do something with related to special events, yeah. right? Which I found yeah. super interesting because, of course, usually we try to help the people that, you know, the path that we've walked. And and it, I, I feel like it's, it's probably the natural response. You know, hey, I'm going to help people that are trying to come into the special event space. But then you realize that's not your passion, And that's what I meant here in the intro where I'm like, you know, he did something that a lot yeah. of people will be afraid of doing, which is pivoting completely, pretty much, right? Like, hey, it's totally yeah. okay. So what do you, like, first, I, I'm super curious, you know, was there any fear in that transition, like that decision that you did right there? Um, and if so, be, besides dealing with it, you know, like, how do you think, what, what do you think led you to have this success that you're having right now? Yeah, it's it's a great question, and it was in it was sometime in the summer of 2018. I I went through that chaotic period of figuring out like what's the new thing. Like I mean, I, I'm like on my whiteboard, just like a madman, writing out ideas, and 
I had, I think I had some like t-shirt idea that I, I like, I keep going to these t-shirt businesses cause I love t-shirts <laughs> yes. and it's like, eventually it's going to happen. I'm going to have a t-shirt store at some point. It just <laughs> hasn't it. happened yet. But anyway, what, what had come to my, like the, the thing that I wanted to do and what I was going to do in special events was I was going to build a software. I was going to get into SaaS. In fact, I was trying to be like, that's when I discovered click funnels and Russell Brunson. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to be the Russell Brunson of the special <laughs> events industry and build this <laughs> software. And I was writing a book called event pro systems that teaches you how, cause the thing that was different for me is that I was a business owner in the special events industry that lived three hours from the business, which was very like uncommon to find in that yeah, industry. Yeah. Wow. So I ended up like, I was like uh, I special event magazine picked me up as the top thousand event professionals in the country. Um, I got ranked in, um, what was it? Um, no, I'm sorry. That was, it was bid biz bash. I got ranked in biz bash for that. And then special event yeah. magazine picked me up for that too. It's like some notable awesome. things because of that particular situation wow. that was yeah. uh, like very rare to find. Well, this is what happened, man. Like I started in this huge software project. I was writing this book. I never had published, like barely made a post on Facebook. Yeah. And all of a sudden, like I built, I was building like a maniac. I was building the software, like spending all this money. And then it was May of 2019. So it was almost a year later. I was like, all right, well, I feel like I'm at a point right now where I can launch something. And I guess this means that I have to start publishing. This means that I, I'm starting <laughs> to go on podcasts. And now I've got to be this thought leader, like in this industry that I didn't realize that I just didn't care about anymore. Mm. And when it came time to publish, I felt all this resistance, like, and I thought at first, I thought, well, you know what? I'm new. Like, yeah, there's going to be resistance, right? When you're yep. new at something, you're going to feel resistance. And so I'm just going to accept it and just keep with it. And then five months later, it just didn't go away. Like I just kept <laughs> feeling like nothing was clicking and I was about 60 grand into this project wow. and I don't know how many hours of time. And I realized that I made a mistake and was building a business that I was building the wrong business is really what I was doing. Yeah. And, uh, and it, I just had to read a writing on the wall and it was October, 2019. And I decided to shelf the entire project and start over. Ooh. Um, and that was a really scary thing to do because there was a lot of money involved and a lot of time involved. I yeah. spent over a year working on this and, um, it was just, it was, it was a, it was a very liberating feeling as much as it was scary at the same time. Yeah. And, um, so that's what, so at that point I just really got obsessed with clarity, like finding clarity in your journey and in your mission and how you serve. And I just like, I'm just going to start there. And then from there, I'm going to kind of grow into this next mission. And about, you know, since that was October, 2019 leading up to now, um, I made, you know, a few more pivotal points, you know, through the journey, you know, I had a couple things, a couple ideas and really like developed a nice foundation of learning how to kind of bring clarity to your vision yeah. that starts with the core purpose of how you want to serve. Yeah. Mm. Wow. There, there, there's so many points there. First, uh, I want to start with the t-shirts, you know, because <laughs> we actually did the t-shirt thing when we first started. Whoa. I mean, if don't my my only you know uh opinion would be don't do the screen printing yourself man like <laughs> yeah either get out the printer or something man we struggle it was that i mean we we tell that story in a few other episodes but it was rough and actually these shirts that we're wearing right now it, we we made and this is like the yeah. last memory of that so going back to not enjoying what you're doing right we weren't enjoying it and we had two people we're like okay let's do something else let's move on to the next one yeah and yeah. You know, what I found super exciting is that topic on you spend this whole year studying, right? Like diving deep, like building and and then you're like, okay, I need to publish now. I guess I got a launch. I need to publish. And then you found this resistance. Yeah. So I have two questions here. First is, do you think the resistance went away or do you, do you still get the resistance, right? If you do, how do you deal with that? And then mm. what is your advice, I guess, on, you know, I, not your advice. Like, I want to see your point of view on, on publishing now, right? Because before, yeah. uh, like in that story that you, that you told, I'm getting the sense of publishing as a tool, as an immediate tool for reaching people, right? So I'm, I wonder yeah. if you have a different point of view about publishing right now. Man, like... 
you asking me those questions gets me so excited. This is a topic <laughs> I love talking about with publishing and the fear and the resistance and like, cause yeah. I'm now, I'm actually an introvert, believe it or not. I'm, I'm very introverted. And you know, even I always tell the story, like when I was in kindergarten, I was so backwardly shy that my kindergarten teacher called my mom on the day I let her tie my shoes. She was like, you'll never believe what Jake let me do today. He oh. let me tie his shoes. <laughs> and uh, so my mom, like when she was like, you're doing what? I'm like, yeah, I got a podcast. I got a radio show. She's like, amazing. She's like, I've got to call your kindergarten teacher. Cause she's never <laughs> <believed."> <laughs> uh. So, so I just, but it was something, it's just who I am. I'm, I'm definitely an introvert. And I think when you get started, you're going to, there's going to be this fear of almost like you, you, you criticize yourself, you become your own worst critic and, and you overthink about how you're perceived to the people you're speaking to. And that was definitely what I was experiencing. And, and I remember, dude, this will make you laugh as podcasters. Like my first podcast I went on, I literally, I, I, first off, I said, these are the questions I want you to ask me. I told him the questions I want him to ask me. And then I went and typed out my responses to the questions and had the piece of paper beside me. I like, it. like I was going to read them all for something. Oh no. and, and, and then I never even touched the piece of paper when we started. <laughs> I, I don't even remember what the questions were, but that's how scared I was yes. about wow. publishing. Yeah. Because I to the point where I'm like writing out my answers and like memorizing them, which is a terrible idea. And uh, <laughs> so anyway, what has happened to answer your first question? Like now, no, I don't at all. I used to I used to like think about the idea of going live on Facebook. And I remember it would terrify me. But yeah. then I hit record or hit live, not record, but hit the live button. And I started talking and I realized like this isn't so bad. And it's okay to screw up a little bit. It's okay to trip over your words a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And it's all like, it's. I always go back to, I don't know if y'all study any stoicism or not, but I always think about the Seneca, the elder quote, we suffer more from imagination than we do in mm. reality. Yes. And when I think of publishing, it's just that quote really speaks to that so well because in our imagination, we think it's like, it's like I've got, I don't know, whatever, 3,000 or 4,000 friends on my Facebook profile. And I feel like when I hit live, like initially I'm thinking like 4,000 people are like watching me like speak, <laughs> yeah. criticizing everything I'm saying. And it's like, I'm walking on some stage and there's 4,000 people watching me, but really it's just, <laughs> that's just not true. That's not really how it is. Yeah. And the fact is, is that, and this is the other thing too, and I want to give you a piece of advice and the listeners, a piece of advice here about publishing that really helped me kind of break through that fear. Absolutely. Um, the first thing is, well, actually it's two things. The first one is you just got to start don't overthink it and just hit start and speak. And people love that authenticity. People love the realness about you and, and just let you shine and, and love that. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's that, that's the first thing, just kind of keep that in mind. But the second thing is I really flip the lens around and think about the people I'm serving, right? That's really what it's about. It's not about whether or not I, say ums or my ahs or you knows or whatever, you know, too much, or maybe I'm, maybe my head's a little bit too shiny for the camera right now or <laughs> whatever, whatever the thing is that you're criticizing yourself for that doesn't matter at all. Yeah. It's about the message you're putting out to people and you yeah. never know who could be listening to that message and you never know how, if that message or how that message could, could impact our life in a very positive way. And it just takes one statement, right? It was like that statement I just said to you about Seneca the Elder. We suffer yes. more from imagination than we do in reality. Yeah. yeah. So, so Jake, like, that was, the, sorry, you were, you continue. Continue, uh, please, because this is amazing. <laughs> yes. Oh, no, no, no. It, it, all I was going to say is, is the last thing here, the last pillar is to celebrate your growth. So in my mm -hmm. podcast, like episode six, I call it the, the look back of transformation. And it's a solo episode I did. And what happened was episodes two through five, I recorded those like a month, like back in June. It was the interviews. And then episodes seven and eight were interviews I recently recorded about a week before I started editing. And I remember I was listening. I was now I've outsourced it actually to Corey and Ron for the podcast stuff. But like at the time I was doing my own editing and yeah. I was listening to myself and I was like, man, I can definitely tell a difference between how I sound and my energy between the first four episodes and the last two that I just recorded. Yeah. And normally, like, I feel like the old me would be like, 
criticizing myself like gosh how could you sound and it's not that I sounded bad but I, I could tell that energy change that difference in energy yeah and you might want to feel hesitant to release those because you feel like you don't sound perfect or whatever but instead I was like you know what this is something to celebrate this is growth right like I can't wait to episode 100 yeah, exactly. to look at 100 as compared to episode seven or two or three, right? Or one episode 1000 and compare that to episode two. And you're documenting yeah. the transformational the yeah. journey through your podcast and through your publishing. You can go back and hear how you were years ago and you can see the transformation. It's the, there's just something beautiful about that, that oh, yeah. I think is, is something to think about, to get excited about. Yeah. Dude, Jake, thank you so much for sharing all this with us. You know, for those listening right now, go watch the video because you know, Fonzie is at my face or like two huge smiles <laughs> because this is exactly what we talk about every single day. And it's just like facing your fear through the publishing, right? Like it's, it, it's incredible. The, the growth journey that everybody can be on. And I'm so thankful and grateful that you are on that path too with your own stuff and discovering that, especially after having, you know, the success that you had with your other companies and, and pivoting and like learning and doing this thing and, you know, and that's okay. That's part of the journey. The cool thing is like now you have a audience, people that help you relationships, you know, joint ventures, team members like that support you and support yeah. you on your journey. How, how you are, you know, you said a couple of things here that, uh, well, especially, you know, we suffer more from the imagination that, uh, than we do from the reality. And that's fact. Like we tell ourselves like these crazy stories, right. That feed yeah. our fear. And then it, it like it makes us perception. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, um, I want to share a quick, a quick story here. I remember when I was like, uh, you know, clearly we have also an accent. We're not from Virginia, but we're from Venezuela. <laughs> and uh, our English is not very good looking, but that's okay. Uh, and uh, I remember being on a, on a speech class in college, right? This is like, what, five, six years ago. So my accent was still like thicker, right? And they're like, hey, you just got to talk out, out there in front of the class and you gotta share a story about your country, you gotta share something about your country, right? So I'm like, oh, easy, sweet. So, you know, I know a bunch of stuff about my, my country, so I'm not even gonna research. So I put some pictures up there and then I went on and started speaking. And uh, the professor was sitting there and they had somebody count all the hums and the ahs and all this stuff, count them, right? Like that was the specific job of this person. And so one student goes in, they count, you know, oh, well, you said, you know, in three minutes, you said it 10 times in four, in three minutes, you said it two times and whatever. Right. So that was kind of like the focus of the thing. I'm like, oh, man, like I like I think I'm going to crush this. I never say um, some Oz or whatever. Like, <laughs> I don't think so. Well, I say my three minute speech and then I come back <laughs> and the teacher, like because of the energy was up because, you know, naturally, I think like that's an environment that we love being in. So. But I did say some hums on us, right? And I could tell by the face of the students that they were kind of shocked and uh, that they thought I was going to fail that stuff. And the students like, you want to know how many you said? And I'm like, go ahead, say it. You said a hundred <laughs> in three minutes. And I'm like, what? After that, I was not able to talk in public. I was like, so my subconscious was like, holy crap, like I'm not going to be able to be like in front of a camera anymore. Right. So those things like feed up your, 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 your fear inside of you when you're about to publish. But guess what? The only way to break it is like you said, it's like, Hey, go actually go do it. And then as you get better, go celebrate that, which I thought it was incredible, man. Like, thank you so much for sharing that. I think we need to celebrate a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. We do need to throw <laughs> some parties for sure. Yes. But you know, like I, I love that. And to tie that, what my brother just said here, you know, when, when you listen to those type of stuff that people are saying, hey, uh, if you say ums and ahs, all that, you know, you're not being a good public speaker. Like, don't get that get into your head, right? Because at the end of the day, yeah. like, some people are going to like you and then some people are not going to like you, right? Like, that, that's 100% normal. Not always 100% of people are going to like you. And I think it's super important for people to understand that it's not our job to 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 make other people feel a certain way, right? All we can do, all we yeah. can control is ourselves, our actions, the way we speak, right? I mean, if you want to stop saying ums and, and all that stuff, okay, maybe just go in front of the mirror and practice it, whatever whatever you want to do. But I think it gets to a point where you're like, you know what, like, this is me and that's totally fine. It's totally fine if, if I say it, right? And, yeah. and eventually when you remove yourself from what is the other person thinking about me, right? What if I say so many ums, like, what are they going to think about me? If you remove yourself from that, 
is gonna that resistance is gonna lower because because now it's not your responsibility. You cannot control how other people are gonna feel about what you're talking about. So that's my tip, my advice for people is really don't you know don't care that much about what other people are gonna feel after you talk. Of course, care about your audience and and you know like you said right like what is my audience want to hear what do they want to hear and and that's obviously part of the the whole strategy but on how you make them feel how they feel from listening to you you gotta separate that feeling because yeah. it's gonna do you no good and you know what like you said that you don't feel any resistance um i'm surprised i honestly thought you were gonna say you still feel resistance <laughs> right and and that's my personal experience like I mean, this is episode 77 and I still feel <laughs> resistance sometimes, right? And, yeah. and but it, the thing is like now we've trained our body and our mind to take action regardless of the resistance. We're like, hey, it's okay. I it. I, we look resistant in the face, uh, put some, some boxing gloves, you know, bam, bam, punch each other in the face a little bit and then we go and do it. Uh, and it's it's totally okay, right? Yeah. So I, I'm, I, I wasn't thankful i guess and yeah yeah i'm thankful for you sharing that like you don't feel that way either you know because now i can feel see like both sides of the spectrum i guess yeah so jake you you mentioned something really really important right like we struggled with that for a long time when we first started like our services with the agency and so mm -hmm. on it's like it's all about the who i'm serving so yeah. i have a question mm -hmm. before we go into the last couple of them that we have for the show it's like how how do you find that who? Because you came from an industry and then completely pivoted into something a little bit different. So are you still in the process of finding that who? Like, what are some of the things that you actually did to actually find that right audience? Uh, yeah, let's dive into that. You know, that's, yeah, and I think the, the question of the who and who your avatar is, is, is a question that once upon a time used to kind of paralyze me a little bit. In, in progress because I would I would get so caught up into the details of who this person was yeah that mm -hmm. I was like trying I felt I felt like I was forcing things to work so the change that I had made and, and there's a couple things that um, that I have shifted I guess in my perception or my approach to like finding the who that I feel like is working pretty well for me um, so far <laughs> at least so far it is yeah is uh, the first thing is having just a general understanding of like the market you want to serve, right? Like, is it entrepreneurs? Is it, uh, you know, financial advisors? Is it, mm -hmm. you know, people in the weight loss market? Like where you want, like yeah. just starting, just starting there first. Right. And then you start kind of like diving in deeper and deeper. But, but, but the thing, this, the, the biggest thing I go in after that is like, for me, it's like, okay, entrepreneurs. Perfect. That's still way too broad, obviously. Mm -hmm. But what I really look for are impact driven entrepreneurs, right? People who are looking to make an impact with move, like building a movement, people who are looking to, to really just shine their light and really help as, as, as many people as they can using like by leveraging the internet, by leveraging yeah. what we have online, because that to me is so fascinating that, um, that we can, um, and I can't remember, I couldn't remember exactly where y'all are from, like where do y'all live now? But like I'm in Virginia. Yeah. And in you Florida. got, what's that? Florida, hot and humid Florida. <laughs> Florida, okay, Florida, gotcha. My dad lived in Clearwater for 10 years, so yeah. I actually got married in Florida. <laughs> oh, sweet, there you in go. Florida, I'm in Virginia, and, you know, there's people all over the world, and, like, you know, I've got a client right now who lives in London, and yeah. you've got all these, these connections are crazy, so, like, you have a drive to make impact with, with people Absolutely. all over the world yes. with your message and how you serve, so... That's kind of like, okay, well, let's start there. Like I, I have that general idea, right? But then the next kind of level below that is something, and actually I don't see this often taught in, in kind of thinking your avatar, but this is something I learned just through my own business is establishing that foundation of core values. Mm -hmm. And, but making that part of your who, right? Because yeah. this is the thing, when it comes to people you work with on a client, the client, you know, as a client level, a customer level, the best relationships are ones or people who have some alignment with your value system and what you believe is is important what you fundam fundamentally um view as right and wrong and like you're like just the priorities that you have and those that system of values so i always look for for 
similarities and values, especially yeah. if you're working on a private level with somebody and it's a Absolutely. very intimate relationship yeah. in business. But then below that, you start to like learn who you attract, right? Mm -hmm. You start seeing by just being yourself, you know, don't worry about just be yourself and like think of yourself as just this magnet, right? Some people you're going to repel, some people you're going to attract, yeah. right? And just have awareness, like who are the people who I tend to repel versus the people who I tend to attract? And then you start recording patterns of similarities of characteristics of people as you're attracting them into wow. your world. It's like, wow, it seems like I think I attract a lot of parents because I'm a dad, you know, yeah. and people relate to me in that capacity. So I might want to think about my content a little bit as about being somebody who is a family man and presenting that because that's going to attract that kind of avatar. We get each other. We understand like what that lifestyle is like as an entrepreneur, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So you start kind of digging down, but I think instead of just sitting back and like trying to like map that out, like take, like let the action of serving reveal your who, Ooh. right? Have a general understanding, but let the action of serving reveal the who. Dude, that's awesome. I like that last phrase right there describe my thought throughout this whole part of the conversation the conversation conversation, <laughs> conversation <laughs> which which was that i was like do, you know like we started too with the same you know sheet that it says who's your who where does it consume their information where do they go where do they do this right and like when you don't even have a business where like, i'm like okay yeah. I, i don't know right so i like yeah. the way you put it that it's like at least know the market first then yeah. Is it people that align with your core values? Cool, because if they don't, probably you're going to have a rough time. And then, yeah. like, through action, and that's, for us, that has yeah. been consistent publishing, right? Like, we have been putting our yeah. message out there, and that's the action that leads people to say, wow, I like these guys, right? And I like what they do. Let me come in and, and reach out and work with them, right? And as you start working with people, then you probably are gonna better, you're gonna be able to better fill up that sheet that says, who's your dream customer? How do they look like? And all that stuff they do, right? Yeah. But I think it's so, yeah. honestly, very challenging at, at first to put, I mean, you can put anybody in there literally, but you don't really know if they're your dream customers because you haven't had a dream customer yet. Yeah, Dude, right. I, I love it. Yeah. That, 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 was, that was beautiful. I mean, the last thing, you know, let the action of serving reveal your who. That's yeah. so powerful. I just so you know, that's going to be a quote for sure. Yeah. Posted uh, everywhere. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> so, yes, uh, I, I love how you frame it because I think it's the first time that we actually see it that way. And, you know, as you were explaining, like Fonzie was saying, we understood that for us, that was consistent publishing, you know, for mm -hmm. you or consistent publishing and starting to serve this, these clients that turn out to be dream clients. And then you're like, okay, how can I find another one of you? And then if it's somebody yeah. that you don't really enjoy working with, or there's a lot of friction, it's like, Hey, you know, maybe this is not the right thing for both of us at the moment. We're still friends, you know, but I need to fire you as a client and then right, go find, <clears throat> sorry, go find that right person. So thank you for sharing that. Now, Jake, two last questions. I know we have to wrap up very soon. So quick action point for somebody that is starting to, you know, move forward. Like what can they do to actually move the needle in the, in their business? What is something that you would like to share as a quick action, actionable thing that they can do today? So you hear, you often hear the, the term, you got to take action. You got to take action. Right. And, and this, this, I think ties in with a lot of what we're talking about just from this whole interview. But I, I always suggest that you should take action with people, right? So, so what I mean by that specifically is one of the best things you can do if you're just getting started is stop, like get out, get out of this like place of solitude behind a computer screen and go mm. find people like connect on a podcast, like mm. get on calls with people and just help serve like that's that right there is you'll you'll find quicker traction the other thing too is when you do come out with an offer that yeah. person who you just helped they're going to remember that yes. time when you serve them and help them and it gives you clarity and so so the biggest mistake i think a lot of entrepreneurs make is that they try to guess at what people want mm -hmm. and what and how people want to be served rather than letting them tell you how they want to be served. Yes. And the only way to really learn that is to take action, but to take action with people and to actually get out there with people. So that's why like human connection and relationships is a big part of the foundation of how I serve, because I know that if you can master relationships 
and be able to build those connection points, not only with customers, but with, with people you're, you're on podcast with or people that you're, you're partnering up with or mm. employees or staff, like in business, it's nothing but relationships with all these different types of people. So you have to learn how to take action with people. So if you really want to get moving quickly, that's where you start. Wow, that was amazing. And you know, like we testified to that because our business started growing once we started taking action with people, once we started building relationships with other people, you know, having these conversations in the podcast and being curious because that's the only way you're gonna really know Absolutely. what their problems are and how you can help them later. Yeah. So thank you so much, that was amazing. Sweet man. Well, Jake, where um, where would you be, right? Because I mean, I think this is a good question, and I think maybe we answered it through the episode, but I want I want your answer now again. Uh, where would you? <laughs> I be want your answer now again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, where would you be if you did not publish? Oh man, Phew. that's like that's that's a that's a deep question right there. Um, let me think here. If I didn't publish, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't. I feel like if if I wasn't publishing, I I'm not sure I would be in I wouldn't be in what I'm doing right now in the in the online space. Like I wouldn't be in the online space. I'd probably still be in the brick and mortar space because when brick and mortar space, I didn't publish. I barely even touched my Facebook page. Yeah. <laughs> I just went out to networking events and networked, and that's that's what I did. And uh, I probably would still be in a job. You know, I probably probably would be out of this business. Probably would have went to a job, and that's what that's where I would be. I definitely don't think that. Like, it is so much fun to like. This is like to be, like honestly, my wife thinks I'm working right now. Right? <laughs> I'm just, like, she thinks I'm working right now. I'm like, honestly, it's like no, I'm having this awesome conversation right now yeah. on this podcast with you guys, and. But to, like, this isn't work. Is this work? Like, <laughs> yeah. really? Like, I'm pinching myself. Like, this isn't work. But if, if I didn't start <laughs> yeah. publishing, this kind of thing wouldn't be possible, right? Yeah. Having this type of lifestyle wouldn't be possible. So, I would be. Uh, I would definitely wouldn't. I wouldn't be in the zone of of happiness. And it is. It's a transitional phase right now for me. But I'm starting to see the momentum yeah. and where this is going. And without publishing, this wouldn't be possible. Beautiful, man. Thank That's you for awesome, sharing with that. Yeah. I totally relate with the wife comment because, <laughs> you know, I come home with a massive smile. And she's like, what were you doing today? Like, were you guys actually working? And we're like, um, I mean, we call it work, but we should start calling it a different thing because we yeah. actually have a ton of fun doing this thing. And uh, yeah, funny, I actually just got a phone call right before the show. And she's like, you know, can you come and stop by and walk the dogs? I'm like, babe, like I have all these like calls scheduled to like 8 p.m. because you told me to stay away because you have a girl's night. And I'm like, I'm not going to be able to walk the dogs. And she's like, do you actually going to work? And I'm like, ah, you know, it is work. You know, it's just, it is what it is. It, it, it's just fun. It's, it's fun, fun. Some fun work. And I can say this because, you know, she doesn't listen to the show. So that's fine. It stays between <laughs> us, you know. <laughs> oh, man, no, it's okay. It's okay. We love it. Yeah. Uh, dude, Jake, how, how can we connect with you? Where can people find you? Mm -hmm. If people from the audience want to find you and connect with you and uh, you just have a chat, where can where, where can they find you? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the best place to connect with me is in my Facebook group. It's called The Core Collective. And um, it's just www.growmycore.com. And that's a little vanity URL. I got connected to the Facebook group. Um, it, it, I'm doing like monthly mastermind grow, events in there. And we're, sorry, is, is it growmycore.com? Yeah, it's G R O W M Y and then C O R E. So growmycore.com. And it's called the Core Collective. So when you see awesome. that, that's what it is. And and um, honestly, like the group, like I'm like my my goal in there is about connections. So we're doing like hot seat rooms, we're doing these monthly mastermind connection calls nice. where we get like my goal is to get a thousand people on a Zoom call to these to do these connection events. And it sounds crazy, but there's like a method to the madness. So Um, if you want to like build some connections with myself and, and really in that community, I'd, I'd love to have you over there. So that's exciting. Yeah, Absolutely. thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the invite. Absolutely. I'm sure like we will be hitting that link and uh, joining you guys over yeah. there. And we encourage everybody yeah. that is either yes. watching or listening to go right now to growmycore.com and obviously join the group. Yes, we're also going to leave it right in the description, in the links, all the links and the stuff where you're supposed to leave them. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> team, thank you. <laughs> uh, dude, 
Jay, this was amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. I appreciate you taking some time of your day and coming and chatting with us and, and teaching us. I encourage everybody to go listen to your podcast as well. So we're going to leave the links right here as well. Uh, but um, yeah. yeah. The introspective podcast, introspective. right? Introspective. The Introspective Podcast. Beautiful. There we go. <laughs> Love it. Yes, the Introspective Podcast. Awesome. I, always, I always bring my singing voice when I say my podcast now. <laughs> yeah, we, that, that's something we've been talking about. We're like, we need to come up with some content this profit jingles, right? So oh. I'm learning how to play the guitar literally just so I can <laughs> sing some jingles here live in content this profit. <laughs> So, oh, man, love it. that day I won't be around. I'll be, you know, Hey, outside. it's okay, Jake. I'll, <laughs> I'll bring you on and we'll sing together. Sweet. Dude, I'm with you, man. Let me know. <laughs> awesome, guys. Well, Jake, don't leave. We have to say bye to the Facebook audience. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for tuning in to the Continence Profit Podcast. Don't forget to go ahead and subscribe. Actually, go ahead and subscribe. Hit smash <laughs> it. What happened today, Luisa? And uh, don't forget to follow us on social at Peace Versco. That is right, guys. And if you find this episode impactful, please don't forget to share it and leave a five-star review. Thank you, guys. Bye.